do you want? What are the good things you want me uh, to say about you? <laughs> and when I did that, I did that on Twitter, and she said, "Can I say it in 140 characters?" <laughs> and I said, "Absolutely." So in 140 characters, passionate educator, NDE e-learning specialist, Pepperdine Mall alum. She can explain more. EdCamp Omaha, co-organizer, sorry, EdCamp Omaha, co-organizer, need a board member, and social butterfly. <laughs> Christina. Um, I am a former elementary teacher. I'm just going to preface, so if you see me do a song and a dance, it's because I used to do that with students. And you can take the girl out of the classroom, but you can't take the classroom out of the girl. <laughs> all right, applause, all right, we're off to a good start. <laughs> well, as Guy said, that I am the e-learning specialist in the School Library Liaison for the Nebraska Department of Education. I did leave the classroom um, at the end of the school year of, of 11-12, so I've been in this position for about a year now, and I've had the opportunity to work with school districts and educational service units and teachers and students all across the state of Nebraska. Um, I live in Omaha, work here in Lincoln, and then I get to travel quite a bit. So I'm very excited to be here with you all this morning. And um, I remember being in something like this, a seminar um, at Peru State, whenever I went back to school for education. So my first degree is actually in business and mass communications. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go be a PR person or work in journalism and change social media. Not really. So I decided to go back to school for education because really my heart was with students. And so I did that whenever I moved here to Omaha um, from Phoenix, Arizona. So um, I am an Arizona State alum, but I'm also a Peru State alum, a Concordia alum, and now a Pepperdine alum. And I just keep going back to school because I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, <laughs> not really. I love to learn. And you will find that as a teacher or as an educator, you will become lifelong learners. And it's so cliche to say that. Um, however, it's really true, and that moment that you decide that you're done learning, then maybe you should step out of the classroom, um, only because we are the models of learners for our students, okay? So today we're going to talk about moving beyond the trends to personalized learning for every student every day. In my work, I work with school districts, and I see that the trend is to buy technology whether they know what to do with it, um, whether they know how it's going to change their teaching, uh, they go ahead and buy it because they want to keep up with everyone else. So we have things like MacBooks, we have things like iPads, Chromebooks, iOS devices, <coughs> more iOS devices, and then we have all of these things, Web 2.0 tools, things that you can use in the classroom no matter what device you have, and that they are supposed to revolutionize your teaching. We also have all of these, our iOS devices. Um, again, something that we are supposed to be using to transform our learning and transform our teaching in the classroom. So, here we go. Things changed when Google entered our classrooms. They really did. Um, I was not a teacher at that point, but I can point out some teachers in this room that actually were teachers when Google entered the classroom. And as much as Google has influenced our education in the classroom, um, we are still learning how to teach or how that affects our pedagogy since it has come in. So here are some fun facts for you. <coughs> this is actually from 2011. Um, in 60 seconds on the internet, 168 million emails were sent, 694,445 searches on Google, 695,000 Facebook status updates, 98,000 tweets, 13,000 iPhone app downloads, 25 hours total of YouTube video uploads. It was in 2011. Now, they didn't put anything out in 2012, so you skip ahead to 2013, and let's see how some of these things change. 204 million emails are sent, 2 million searches on Google, 41,000 posts per second on Facebook, 278,000 tweets, 3,600 photos every second on Instagram. Do I have an Instagram user? Okay. Yeah, all right, okay. Um, 72 hours total of YouTube videos posted. That's in 2013. Every 60 seconds. So here's 2014. 
138.8 million emails sent, 2.66 million searches on Google, 293,000 statuses updated on Facebook, 433,000 tweets, 67,000 photos uploaded on Instagram, and over 5 million videos viewed on YouTube. So I have a question for you. What does this mean <coughs> for students in our regular classroom? Turn and talk to someone at your table. collect from our school districts, except we finally started taking that data that we had of the department and actually giving that back to the school districts. So this was actually presented at the administrator days at the end of July. And you will see some significant changes from the first year that we gave this data back in 2013 to this past year. Um, you will see in 2012 and 2013, um, we had 1.61 devices per student, and that has actually gone down now to 1.47. So that is taking all of the devices, no matter where you are, and then figuring that against the over 300,000 students that we have in this state. So really that's 1.5 devices per student. Now there are pockets where you're gonna find that they actually have one-to-one -one classrooms and one-to-one -one schools, and then you will find schools that have no technology. And that is just very common, okay? Um, but this is, a, this is promising. This is a good thing for our state that we have so much technology that is um, accessible to our students. So we've added over 20,000 devices in this past year. Um, there's 134 districts that are one-to-one. -one. You all know what one-to-one -one is, correct? One device per student, okay? And then we had all of our public school districts that reported this year. So our um, parochial schools and any of the other schools, the private, um, they have the option whether or not they report. But this, is, this is good that we had such high participation. Then we have our one-to-one -one and bring your own device, or BYOB. Um, we have 134 schools that are one-to-one, -one and 32 that are doing BYOD. And that is going to continue to grow even this next year. One of my former districts, Ralston Public Schools, they are trying to um, implement BYOD this year, so they'll be adding that on for next year. So I already know that's gonna jump up to 33 for sure. 
Um, and then you can see, obviously, the percentages. Um, that we have 53% of, of our Nebraska schools that are one-to-one, -one, and 13% that are doing BYOD. Um, Iowa, if any of you are going to go teach in Iowa, you should know that they have significantly more schools that are one-to-one. -one. Um, not saying that we're behind, but we're catching up to them. So, um, again, this is promising. Our instructional technology. We had, in 2012, um, 27,959 mobile devices and our desktops were 159,000. Um, you can see that we've had over 15,000 more mobile devices in the past year, including over 7,000 more desktops. So one out of every five computers is mobile. So what does that mean for your teaching? Talk to your neighbors. <coughs> Growing up in school, we're like, who wants to share? 
Yes. Um, I just remember the keyboarding thing, like quick S was only and typing all that words per minute thing. Okay. Yeah. You're like the overhead projector at the class And that definitely was a technology, brand new technology that revolutionized the classroom. Can you believe that? Anyone else? I grew up. Yeah, go ahead. I was just saying, I remember it was a big deal when we got Okay. Why was it such a big deal? Well, really like it was pretty awesome. <laughs> Are you good? Oh. Okay. Do any of our young go ahead? Love it. <laughs> well, I just remember we had like wall in the TV if we ever like had a class. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Oh, we use chalkboards. Yes. Very strong smell of chemical. That got stuck on your hand. <laughs> and then you get their papers. Um, we had uh, film projectors, so the teacher had the you know, stress um, through the projector. Um, the film strips guaranteed to put everyone to sleep. <laughs> and, uh, many times they were red because they were old too. So. Yes. I don't remember using any technology other than TVs and overheads when I was in high school. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember using email for the first time in college. Okay. Trying to figure out. <laughs> yes. Well, you all know how old I am. And so one of the, the things that you know I remember you know, was the. the the blackboard was really black. So yeah, <laughs> they had a green one. That was that was 2.0 <laughs> kind of thing, and uh, and still using uh, ink pens. Yeah, I'm old. <laughs> Anyone else? I grew up with Oregon Trail, reader, and reader rabbit. <laughs> Those are some of my favorites. In fact, I just learned of a Chrome extension that you can actually put Oregon Trail on your Chrome browser. And I cannot wait to try it. <laughs> so when you had mentioned as far as going to the computer lab, um, if you think about that for our students, um, that becomes a, an event, okay? It's not like I say, oh, we get to use pencils today. That's kind of how we're treating technology right now. Yes, we get to go to the computer lab, and our kids are super excited. But imagine how their learning can change when we bring that into the classroom and use that on a consistent basis. So because of all of this, the Nebraska Department of Education and the Educational Service Unit Coordinating Council, it's a really long name, you might also hear of them as ESUs. How many of you are from Nebraska? Okay. How many of you are familiar with an ESU? Okay, so an ESU basically provides services for a variety of school districts in a certain region of the state. Um, we have 17 of them across the state of Nebraska. And we have a coordinating council that kind of oversees everyone, um, which is actually just recent. And so in combination, or excuse me, in partnership with ESUCC, um, we noticed that we needed to start looking at things beyond just a traditional brick and mortar school. In fact, here's a fun fact for you. Elkhorn Public Schools right now in Omaha, Nebraska, their first grade class is so large that by the time they enter their freshman year of high school, it's going to require seven high schools for all of them. Seven. They have two. They have two. It's a small community still, even though it's been annexed by Omaha. Still a small community. So how are they going to meet the needs of all of those students? Even if that is several years away, you obviously have to start thinking about that. And that's really what the Department of Ed and ESUCC has done as well. We started to look at some new ways of meeting our learners' needs and using a blended learning approach. Okay? Blended learning is a combination of synchronous and asynchronous um, meetings. So synchronous being face-to-face, -face, asynchronous being online. 
And so how are we going to use that in a K-12 environment? The universities and colleges have been doing this for quite some time. In fact, my first online course was when I was a freshman at Arizona State in 2001. So I've been doing some online stuff already, and you will see that colleges and universities have as well. But now we need to start looking at how we're going to bring that down into a K-12 level. Um, some of the other um, elements of blended learning. It's taking that teacher-centered classroom and making it student-centered. So you are no longer the content master, and you have to be okay with that. You have to know that it's okay that students come in knowing more about technology or more about science if they're really interested in bugs, which I had second graders that love bugs, um, or snakes. Whatever they come in knowing, and you have to be okay with the fact that you don't know it all, and that's okay. So this is what we've started to look at, and I give credit to Julia Forsyth um, for creating these sketch notes because it's such a great representation of what blended learning is, um, how we want that to get away from the lectures and sitting in an auditorium like this. <laughs> Um, and that we want to meet our kids online and out of the classroom. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have created a statewide initiative called Blend Ed. Okay? Blended learning, we just changed it to Blend Ed. Um, the people at Bright Bites Labs in San Francisco that have been working with a bunch of our school districts across the state created this logo. And it's been good for us because if we go out and we promote um, Blend Ed in this initiative and we talk to legislators who actually might help fund this um, because it has no money behind it right now. Uh, it's just simply what our teachers know is best for our students and that they're trying to do it on their own. Um, that we have something to show them. So we are combining traditional elements, classroom elements, with our distance education elements, which we have a good history of distance education. Uh, actually, have any of you taken a distance education class here in Nebraska? Yes? What did you take? A Spanish class in high school. Perfect. And where are you from? Curtis, Nebraska. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah? I took, uh, like, English law in my high school. Awesome. Where are you from? Wood River. Oh, yeah. My husband's family's from Wood River. Woo oh, yeah. Go East. All right. <laughs> um, so we're combining this distance education and this traditional classroom method with our online delivery, which you all kind of know what Blackboard looks like, and our participation. Um, this was actually one of my Pepperdine classes that we met in Google Hangouts three times a week, and we would do group projects together. Um, so this was one way that we did our blended um, master's program. So we believe in student control over time, place, pace, and path, because not all students learn the same way. So once again, I'm gonna go back to Bright Bites, and they provided this infographic based on Nebraska data right now, and they provided this um, that I can share with all of you today. So we're talking about personalized learning and blended learning, so what does that look like? The best learning is driven by the learner. And here is some interesting information that 79% of Nebraska students find it easy or very easy to collaborate online. 70% um, of students are reading online content. Um, however, many of these learning environments in our schools aren't keeping up with their skills. Only 10% are asked to review information online by their teachers. Only 9% are students are asked to write online at least monthly. And then here's where it affects you as educators. We're ready to move forward as educators. Um, six, of, six out of 10 believe that they're ready to move forward with teaching in their classroom. Uh, however, you'll see only 50% of teachers in Nebraska schools are getting professional development less than eight hours. Okay, so what does that mean for you as a new teacher coming into education? Um, you can't always rely on the professional development that your school districts provide. So now I'm going to ask you, where do you find your information? Go ahead and talk to your neighbors. All right. So where do you continue to get your professional development? Where do you learn? Pinterest. Pinterest. Okay. <laughs> Everyone starts there, it's okay. <laughs> Twitter. Yay, Twitter. 
Google Plus communities. Perfect. What kind of communities are you involved with? Uh, primarily the uh, iBook writers. Do you have any iBook writers in here? <coughs> yes? Okay. Well, we're going to get more. <laughs> Trust me, we're going to get My more. My students all have iBooks instead of textbooks, right? Nice. Right. Very nice. Anywhere else? Yes. The teaching channel. They're good videos. Good plug. <laughs> Anywhere else? Colleagues. Colleagues. <laughs> it helps when you have someone that's super knowledgeable, too. <laughs> Woo! Yes! I'm so excited. Heather Callahan, she's also a co-organizer of EdCamp Central Nebraska, so I'm excited to have another EdCamper here. If you are not familiar with an EdCamp, then you should be. Um, EdCams are an unconference, so instead of having sessions already decided for you, it's all participant driven. So you come that day and you determine your own learning for the day. So if you have a question about what do I do when I get into a classroom, because I have absolutely no idea, put that question up on the board and people show up. They're conversations, they're not presentations, and it is one of the best days of learning. So if you ever have a chance to go, EdCamp Omaha is coming up in March. EdCamp Central Nebraska, we already had two weeks ago but there are some around here for you to uh, get involved with. Anything else? Yes? Need it, let's see. Um, <coughs> uh, some of the school districts, uh, like Lincoln Valley Schools, have coaching model. Yes. So we have instructional technology <coughs> coaches and instructional coaches and library media coaches that help with uh, the learning at the time of need too. Perfect. Uh, and also developing uh, inspired montage. Some, uh, video of that to instruct when you're ready for it. Yes. That's your point. Yes. yes. And Safari Montage is actually part of this Blend Ed initiative. Um, it's a learning objective repository. So think of Pinterest with all of your resources um, for the classroom, but these are all created by Nebraska educators. And that is what we are trying to build our uh, repository right now with some amazing resources that are aligned to Nebraska state standards and provide professional development, but they also provide resources for you to use in the classroom. Um, so thank you for mentioning Story Montage, because that will be coming out. Um, it's already out, but we're continuing to develop the repository and, um, and get that out to everyone across the state. Anything else that wasn't mentioned? Okay. So professional development, again, I will preface, you can't always rely on the professional development that you get in your school district. Um, you have to be out there and proactive in your own learning, um, whether that's through Google Plus communities or Twitter. I um, <laughs> um, some of these other forms that you can find that help you find resources um, and just meet with other teachers um, are they're great resources. Uh, I will also say that conferences like ISTE or NIDA, they have student rates that you can take advantage of while you're still a student. Um, and so, a uh, $300 conference normally might be 150 um, So take advantage of that while you can. So Blend Ed, it's personal. Um, you obviously see that there is, a, there is some significant data that we have here that um, go ahead, that supports the Blend Ed initiative. Um, I, I feel like I've given you a brief overview of Blend Ed, but we're going to do a little activity. And um, like I said, we are presenting this to legislators to help us fund Blend Ed, um, get some more money behind it, and um, get teachers involved. So I would love it if you would talk to someone and come up with some sort of sentence why Blend Ed should be considered in Nebraska schools. And then, can you tweet it? Because that would be awesome. Use the hashtag TechEdge12. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna give you about five to seven minutes to do this with someone near you. Why Blend Ed should be considered in Nebraska with all of this that you've heard so far. Okay. Um, I think Blend Ed should connect students and teachers via social media in a positive way. Leah, where are you? Thank you. You're right, it can. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Higher Ed and Blend Ed partner to connect teachers with pre-service teachers for 21st century students. Perfect, thank you, Lori. <laughs> Just that, Blend Ed is needed in Nebraska. Technology collaboration and student independence are all necessary in the future of education. Where are you, Jessa? Thanks. Perfect. Angie, Blend Ed is needed in Nebraska because it expands possibilities, ideas, connections, and in turn, learning. Awesome. <laughs> Mickey added, Blend Ed is needed to help our small rural schools survive and thrive. It's very true. And as someone who's not from here and doesn't understand rural school life, um, I've, I've come to learn that over this past year, especially with our distance education opportunities that we have, where we have students that are actually taking music courses from the Manhattan School of Music. They are learning how to play the cello from someone in New York City that is teaching them through distance education and they're live on a Skype call or on a Google Hangout and they're sitting there and they're playing the cello, they're playing a piece, and then that um, Manhattan School of Music teacher is helping them, guiding them, facilitating their learning and saying, no, you need to lift your left finger instead of the or lift your first finger versus your third finger. Um, it's very, very cool to see that. But you also want to make sure that we have equitable opportunities across the state. Um, there are not very many career ed teachers right now. In fact, there's a shortage of career ed teachers. And we have so many, um, we have such a great need for career ed. I've been working with the career ed department at the Rocks Department of Education, and we have so many industries that are saying we need um, we need people that are focused in business. We need skills and technical science. Um, so how do we make sure that people in Gordon Rushville get that opportunity the same as they would in Omaha Public Schools? Okay. So these are all of the reasons why we need something like Blend Ed. I'm going to see if there's anyone else. <laughs> Bev says, more resources, personal learning and PD, and wider audiences are why you should use Blend Ed Nebraska. Thank you, Bev. Awesome. So these are great responses that I can't wait to take back to um, my advisory committee. Yay! Thank you all for um, doing that activity. That's fantastic. So the last question that I have for you is actually, if I can get to it, there we go. Um, my question for you that I'm going to leave you with today is how will you move beyond the trends to personalized learning for every student every day? Thank you very much. Have a great day.